The largest volcanic region on Earth is not in Africa or Japan, but under the ice of Antarctica. Scientists found 138 volcanoes in its western part, and if they decide to go wild, you'll surely notice it. They could melt huge amounts of ice that will move into the ocean, raise its level, and make our planet uninhabitable for humans. But before you pack your things to fly away to another planet, hear me out. Only two of the Antarctic volcanoes are officially classified as active now. And it would take a whole series of eruptions, decade after decade, to seriously impact the whole world. Mount Erebus, one of the two Antarctic volcanoes currently in action, proudly bears the title of the world's southernmost active one. It has been continuously erupting since at least 1972. It emits plumes of gas and steam and sometimes even spews out rocks. And scientists call it Strombolian eruptions. One of the coolest features is a lava lake in one of its summit craters, with molten material on the surface. Such lakes are rather rare, because they need certain conditions to make sure the surface never freezes over. The second active volcano is Deception Island, a horseshoe-shaped landmass. It is the caldera of an active volcano that last erupted over 50 years ago. Scientists who monitor it say it shouldn't go wild anytime soon. Antarctica also has plenty of fumaroles. Those are volcanic vents that release gases and vapors into the air. In the right conditions, they can spew out enough stuff to build fumarolic ice towers up to 10 feet tall. Scientists keep an eye on the Antarctic volcanoes with seismometers that detect when the Earth starts trembling from volcanic activity. Sometimes they also use more complicated tech, but it's all really challenging because of how far away this polar region is and how tricky it is to get there. That's why no one can predict when one of the continent's volcanoes that are now sleeping might erupt. We can guess what this waking up would look like if we analyze the events from nearly 20,000 years ago. So, shall we? One of Antarctica's sleeping volcanoes, Mount Takahe, had a series of eruptions and spewed out a good amount of halogens rich in ozone back then. Some scientists say these events warmed up the southern hemisphere. Glaciers started to melt and help finish the last ice age. For these events to repeat, we'd need a series of eruptions with substances rich in halogens from one or more volcanoes that are now above the ice. It's an unlikely scenario, but since it already happened in the past, it's not completely impossible. As for volcanoes hiding under a thick layer of ice, it looks like their gases would hardly make it to the atmosphere. But they would be strong enough to melt huge caverns in the base of the ice and produce a serious amount of meltwater. The West Antarctic ice sheet is wet and not frozen to its bed, so this meltwater would work as a lubricant and set the overlying ice into motion soon. The volume of water that even a large volcano would generate in this way is nothing compared to the volume of ice beneath it. So a single eruption wouldn't make a difference. But several volcanoes erupting close to or beneath any of the western Antarctica's big ice streams would. Those ice streams are rivers of ice that take most of the frozen water in Antarctica into the ocean. If they change their speed and bring unusual amounts of water into the ocean, its level will rise. As the ice would get thinner and thinner, there would be more and more new eruptions. Scientists call it a runaway effect. Something like that happened in Iceland. The number of volcanic eruptions went up when glaciers started to recede at the end of the last ice age. So it looks like, for massive changes, several powerful volcanoes above the ice with gases full of halogens need to get active within a few decades of each other and stay strong over many tens to hundreds of years. Antarctica stores around 80% of all the fresh water in the world, and if they melted all of it, global sea levels would rise by almost 200 feet. And then we'd have to look for a new planet to live on. But this again is an unlikely scenario. It's more likely that the eruptions under the ice will lubricate ice streams and seep water into the ocean. But it wouldn't be the end of the world. A super strong, super angry supervolcano could do it, though. And it has already happened in the past. Over 200 million years ago, the world went through a major makeover with not one, not two, but four massive volcanic eruptions and huge pulses. The supervolcano called Camp had been erupting over and over for 600,000 years. 
It all happened in Rangelia, a large chunk of land that used to be a supermassive volcano stretching across what's now British Columbia and Alaska. And it wasn't the lava or the volcanic ash that ruined the environment. The eruption made carbon levels skyrocket. The planet would never be the same again. This volcanic activity might have helped dinosaurs grow from cat-sized critters into giants we saw in Jurassic Park. It kicked off a 2 million year rainy season. It made the whole world hot and humid. And the dinos just loved it. Researchers dug deep into sediment layers beneath an ancient lake in Asia to uncover these secrets. They found traces of volcanic ash and mercury, clear signs of those epic eruptions. There were carbon signatures showing huge spikes in carbon dioxide levels. It made the atmosphere toasty, and the rain poured down. So the bad news is, another eruption like this could happen. The supervolcano beneath Yellowstone National Park has been sleeping for nearly 70,000 years. But if it wakes up, it would be many times more catastrophic than the eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980. It's considered the most disastrous volcanic eruption in U.S. history. It followed two months of earthquakes and injection of magma below the volcano that weakened and destroyed the entire north face of the mountain. The eruption column went 80,000 feet into the atmosphere and spread ash over 11 U.S. states and several Canadian provinces. The last Yellowstone eruption was a thousand times greater than that. The ground above Yellowstone sits on a hot spot made of molten and semi-molten rock called magma. This magma stuff flows into a chamber beneath the park, about four to six miles down, making the ground puff up like a balloon. But then, as it cools down, the ground goes back to its usual state. Volcano watchers have been keeping an eye on this for a century. They noticed the ground lift up about 10 inches around 20 years ago. But since 2010, it's been going back down. The experts say we have no big eruptions on the horizon, so doomsday isn't coming anytime soon. But there's some underground activity going on lately which keeps us interested. Since humans haven't been around to witness every little thing Yellowstone does, it's kind of tough to say for sure what's brewing down there. Yellowstone has had some epic eruptions within the last couple million years. They happen like clockwork, with gaps of six to 800,000 years between them. The last big one was around 640,000 years ago, and it basically reshaped the entire landscape, spreading ash and debris as far as Louisiana. You can still see the aftermath of the last big eruption in the Yellowstone caldera today. Experts say a massive eruption like the last one is an unlikely scenario. We're more likely to see eruptions of steam and hot water or lava flows. When and with what force it will wake up remains a mystery to scientists. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.